Today we are celebrating Spectrum by having this incredible speaker, Dior Moore, a design activist uh, that is 27 years old but has achieved already so much in his career, based in Rotterdam and founder of his own studio. Please give a warm virtual applause to Dior Moore. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you for that lovely introduction. So sweet. Um, let me see how this works. Right, okay, so Louis already kind of introduced me a little bit, but I'm going to do a little bit more. Um, oh, and hi, everyone, by the way. Um, so my name is Gira Moore. I'm 27 years old from Rotterdam. And yeah, three years ago, I started my studio called Studio Gira Moore. And um, there I am a design activist, and that's kind of a weird word, I think. A lot of people don't really know what that means. So I pulled up a quote where I got it from. This is um, a book called The Design Activist Handbook. It's by Noah Scalin, and it says, being a design activist is a commitment to making conscious choices and realizing how all the decisions you make as a designer affect other people and the planet, which is really pretty, right? <laughs> And I remember reading this when I was working at a company where um, it was very corporate and we were really pushing um, white hetero meals in, in, the, in the branding because that was seen, you know, professional. And at that point, I realized that I was kind of like a part of that problem or that narrative of pushing that as being professional. So when I read this, I felt... Um, attacked <laughs> no. but I felt very conscious of, of what we do as, as designers and what we put out into the world so that's when I made that commitment to make more conscious choices and um, my I guess field of work lies more into like the LGBTQ community um, anti-racism um, these are both communities that I am a huge part of it's, it's part of my identity and it's something that I want to give back um, and this is all under the umbrella of inclusivity, obviously. I just want this whole world to be included in the same, uh, at the same tables, at the same um, e equal um, rights and uh, possibilities. <clears throat> so that's a little bit about me. And then, you know, my mission in, in life and in my company is to basically make this world a little bit more beautiful through creativity. And I think that's where, um, what I also like about creating more than so much is that we kind of have this similar um, goal, I think, where Creative Morning says everyone is a, is a creator, everyone is creative. And I totally agree with that. You know, I always say that um, you can change the world through creativity. And <clears throat> if everyone is creative, then basically everyone can change the world, kind of, right? And that sounds very like deep and dark and meta, but I'll get into it a little bit more. Um, but what I'm trying to say with this and this whole presentation is that we can all make a difference and I'm going to explain how I kind of did that for um, for my own communities by showing one of my case studies, uh, which is the first one is uh, Pride Radio. And um, I don't know, there was already a little bit of explanation on the website, but I'll just explain it a little bit more. Um, Pride Radio is... Um, well, a self-initiated project, so it is a nonprofit, um, and I started it two months ago. It was well, it launched two months ago. I started it way before that, obviously. But um, and in short, it's actually the first online music video platform that exclusively plays music from queer artists. So that was the whole core of it. And the cool thing about it is that users can actually submit songs. So it's not just all the people that I know, but it's be that all of you guys know and people that they know and all the artists. So um, our whole goal was to make the biggest online queer music platform that ever existed, basically. <clears throat> so that's what Pride Radio is. And then I want to kind of take you into the, the process of how I started that. Um, so for me, because um, I have done a couple of projects, so I kind of and I'll, oh, by the way, I also studied communication and multimedia design, so I know a little bit about, you know, <laughs> branding and marketing, um, just for validation. And um, so for me, like the first thing I do is I think in, in concepts, right? So a lot of people that have ideas, they come to me and they're like, hey, Gear, I want to make an app or I want to make, I don't know, a website or a newsletter, which is like 
an application that's a medium. So for me, I first think in concepts. So for me, um, the first thing that I wanted to do was to give queer people um, a platform to shine, to be represented. That's what my company does. That's like the default for me. And the second one was to celebrate Pride because, you know, this year was kind of different due to like Corona and quarantine. So I just thought like, okay, what can we still do to have that kind of sense of belonging that I really missed with Pride? And not just like the Canal Pride at the parties, but I also knew that a lot of queer people really had the most work during Pride season, right? So the drag queens and the artists and the performers, they are now at home not making any money, not making any visibility. So that was kind of the thing. And for me, a concept should have three things. Um, for me, I call it a niche group. You can call it a specific group, but it's different than a target group. So it's just like a group of people that you want to help. And then the goal for me, that's representation. That's always the goal for me. And then the actuality. And that's in this case, you know, the, the quarantine at that time, everyone was obviously talking about quarantine and about Corona, that was like the number one thing. So, um, and then you just combine those two thoughts that you have and you're just like, how can I do that? And that's when you start to think in mediums. So for me, um, this is like the most fun part, I feel like, it's just to think of all the things that you can imagine. And at first I wanted to do this huge Zoom party and then have like, you know, 500 people in the room and then have drag queens and, and queer artists. A DJ music and stuff like that um, and then I was like oh maybe like a boiler room situation or maybe you know make a song and have like drag queens make a video from their webcams and so there's a lot of ideas that you can create to meet that goal but you also have to think like what is um, accessible for me right now what is something that is realistic what is something that has the most potential so I came up with an online radio station with only queer artists and for me, it was weird that it wasn't already there. So that's the first thing when you feel like, why isn't it here? That's usually a good sign. And um, when I have an idea, that's when I usually test the idea. So, um, and this doesn't have to be this huge thing. I mean, I remember in school, I had to do like 50 in-depth interviews and all that stuff. And that's really cute, but who has the time? So <laughs> like, no, so for me, I just went on Instagram. You know, that's where my where my uh, network is. That's where my queer community lives. So I just went on Instagram and said, "That's those little like poll question things," and I just said, "I'm making a pride playlist. What are the artists that I have to know? Let's do this together." And it, under 24 hours, I had like over 100 queer artists collected. Artists were tagging themselves and other artists that they knew, and it became this big thing where people were asking me like, hey, can you put that playlist online so we can all do something? So that's was like the test for me, right? To see like if people would actually even care. Um, and clearly they did. So that's when I knew like, all right, I think there's, there's something here. So that's when I started, um, well, the most fun part of it, obviously, the design process. Um, and I'm not gonna go into like the full depth of everything with the like wireframing and all that stuff. Um, but I'm going to go into like a part that I find super interesting, especially in this topic of spectrum, which is, you know, everything that I do, I try to at least make people feel included. You know, that's what my company does. That's what, you know, is in my heart. And a lot of people ask me, like, how do you make everyone, how do you include everyone? And I just say, like, I don't think that's possible to include everyone. That's so hard. Um, because even for me, I mean, I, I, I was doing this course uh, a couple of months ago um, and it was all about making websites for blind people, which I had never thought about that they also like, you know, go on websites and, and find information or people that are deaf and uh, or, you know, ha are colorblind, you know, all those types of things. So that's a completely new realm for me. Um, but I think for me, even though there's not a handbook, is what I always say, there is Google. So, you know, if you don't know something about a community that you work for, Google it, research them, see what, you know, are the biggest uh, pioneers of their community, um, and just be respectful towards them. And I, for me, I believe that when you have a diverse group of people or diverse um, and inclusive branding, um, 
it's not about who you see. It's just about, or who you don't see. It's about feeling like you could be in that group. So as an example, if you go on a website and you only see professionals, what they would call, AKA, you know, white heterosexual males in suits, it doesn't make me feel like I'm included. While if I see, you know, Asian people, uh, I don't know, Caribbean people, that's not what I am, but I do feel like that could be my friends, that I could be, you know, I could be included in that group. So even that, I think, just showing that you are willing to um, show a different narrative um, is inclusive. So for me and this platform, it's obviously super important. You know, queer, um, the queer community on its own has so many different tribes and so many different letters, uh, the LGBTQIA+, like it keeps going on. So it's, it's so, and even there you have like your own types of discrimination of color, of gender, of all these things. So for us, it was super important to have that mixture. So this is a screenshot of our um, Instagram. And like, if I'm honest, I think around 80% or 85% of the, the songs that are submitted to us, we make sure that we always represent, you know, trans women, black women, black men, right? So um, that's, that's such a huge part of, of um, what it is that we do. And some people will call it forced, you know, like you're forcing, uh, you're thinking too much, but that's the thing, like, you have to, as of right now at least, you, it has to kind of, you have to take more time to do it right now. And that kind of um, feels unnatural for some people, but feels very natural for me now. You know, I don't even think about it that much anymore. I'm just like, all right, so what is the representation? And let's, let's move on. While for some people, it's really like this, lots of brainstorms, and, you know, like this very statistically like, oh, do we do 25%? It's, to me, it's more you know when your brand is inclusive, you know when, you know, it's not all about the numbers, it's this feeling that you have inside, right? So, um, but I mean, I listed here a couple, so you can think about, you know, representation in ethnicity, age, sexuality, gender, even the tribes within the communities, you can think about professions, countries, abilities, etc. So you can start with this one. And I just wanna end with saying that representation matters, not just, you know, for you know the the whole thing like oh I'm so inclusive, but to see yourself in spaces and in like professional settings or even on you know Pride Radio's Instagram um, is super important. So for me, when I was like young, you know, seeing black queer artists that would be so amazing, and I don't think I really had that. So um, yes, um, and here are a couple screenshots of Pride Radio. So. This is also what I mean with representation. We really push, you know, the lesbian community, for instance, like we push them a little harder because we know that even in our community, that's like such a underlit community and it's, it's one that has a lot of controversy and is sexualized a lot. So we take that into account as well. And on the left, you see, you know, something that is inspired by the ballroom scene, uh, the drag scene, which is also super important. And even though a lot of people in our community, in the queer community, might not feel like that's their thing, you know? It's also, if you know the history of, you know, the first Pride and the protest and that that was, you know, by black trans women and what the ballroom scene did for, for Pride and um, for, for the, the rights that we have today, you have to honor that in some way, right? So um, those topics are just super important and I think that with a little bit of research on Google, you'll find most of these things pretty quickly. It's not that hard, I don't think. <laughs> So here are some of my takeaways. There have been a lot because, you know, I learned super much of every project I do. But these are the top three ones. Uh, first one is just find like-minded people. First of all, it's just fun to work with people that have, you know, the same kind of mindset. But also you can't all do it by yourself. It's just so hard to, um, and I think the, the reason why I say this is because a lot of people watching this are probably, well, obviously creators and creatives because everyone is creative. but. Um, if you're anything like me, you're a pretty like perfectionist. You're like, I don't want anybody else to join because then I'm, you know, giving them control over these things. And it's super hard, but at the end of the day, you're going to get further um, once you add people, you know, more hands, more work. It's, it's that simple. And I had to, uh, I had the pleasure to work with two developers and now the team is growing. We have like a PR person, we have like a social media manager. So, and we see all these beautiful things happening now. 
when it was just me, it was just kind of like, you know, me like changing pixels back and forth and just being very, you know, while other people are just like, all right, moving on. And that's actually kind of a segue into the second thing is things will fail. You know, again, when you're a perfectionist, you're just like, oh, we want this and this and this. Because the first idea for Pride Radio, I remember it was so wild, actually. But I had this idea of like this experience online and then you would have different rooms with different music and then people would go in. There would be chat rooms and all that stuff. Right. And then at the end, it was just like only 10 percent of that idea actually made it to the platform. So. At some point, I was kind of like disappointed, maybe, to just be like, this was not like the initial idea. But to see the reception of people and to see that it still mattered so much and that a lot of people liked it and it had so much press um, attention made me feel like, okay, so it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to have all these features that I wanted just to matter, basically. So even if it's like the smallest thing, um, people will love it. And the last one, I mean, the easiest one, just have fun. I've I've set some, uh, well, I've started some projects that weren't as fun at some point when you're just you know putting too much work on your um, on your plate, I guess. And for me, the way to keep the fun is to set realistic goals. Don't be like, all right, I want to launch this next week. Uh, but when I started Pride Radio, I had that idea actually at the end of. Uh, 2018 actually already but then in 2020 actually you know did the whole corona so I think I took like three or four months to really get the team ready and to really set it up so just take your time um, and even if you don't have all that time just go very like low fidelity prototype just don't be too hard on yourself the design is super fun and putting you know things into the world is super fun and that should be the main goal and um, yeah now I just want to talk about you know because I just presented this project that I worked on for months. So you're probably like, I don't have months to create a change. I just want to do it tomorrow. <laughs> and that's also, I mean, creativity is everywhere. So you don't have to go through this whole process. So I'm just going to go through some of the projects that I did that um, were, you know, not as big, let's say. So this one, for instance, this is a t-shirt fundraiser that I did for the LGBT asylum support. In very short, I wrote this little this, I guess, I don't want to say poem, like a little <laughs> piece, I guess, about my coming out. And somewhere in that piece, I said something about um, that I wanted, like, my parents to look at me and say, like, you're perfect just as you are, you know, and that that feeling of um, not being strange or weird, that was something that I really longed for. So I wanted to give that back to the kids that are now 11 and 12 years old. So I had that whole idea, like, all right, I really like that phrase, you are perfect as you are. So that was the concept, and then I was thinking in the medium, so I was like, all right, maybe I can just put it on a t-shirt and you know, sell it and whatever. So I just reached out to uh, my friend who I met also through just networking. Networking is really important, by the way. Um, this is Betta Famila, and she is a, a feminist, also very activist. She, her thing is more like intersectionality and very inspiring, and she's a photographer, so I was just like, hey, let's just do this together. Again, like, get people on board. And we just made this T-shirt. We just had it printed at, like, a local print shop, and then we were like, hey, this is, like, 25 euros, and all of the profit goes to this charity, and then we raised, like, 800 euros in five days. So, um, and again, I mean, now it sounds really easy, but it, it does come with a little bit of promotion. You know, we did put it in, like, Facebook groups and all that stuff, but... It is very low fidelity. This was done in like a couple of weeks. So, and then another one was um, this. <laughs> oh my god, my face. <laughs> um, uh, this is the GS GSA Pride filter. So the GSA is the Gender and Sexuality Alliance. And during Corona, I was so bored. By the way, so I was just like learning new things, and I found this YouTube video of how to make filters. So I was like, oh my god, that's so cool. And so uh, that's where I actually started with the medium, which is really weird, because I saw this medium filter, and so I was like, oh, I want to do something with it. So that's where I kind of switched it up, and I was like, all right, what can I do? And then actually the GSA reached out to me. I was like, hey, I see you make filters. We want to do something to raise awareness during Pride in, in high schools. So I wanted to do this little kind of like campaign where you could use the filter, and then you could tag your friends and all that stuff. So it was really fun. And also this was also obviously just made in a couple of days, and um, 
filters have a huge reach, by the way. I didn't know that. But so it, it really, you know, caught on and people were using it. So again, a, a, a low fidelity project. And this is probably the, the smallest one. Um, uh, I'm going to explain this. I was working with a student hotel at the time, and um, this was also during Corona. So a lot of the students that lived there, because there are like long stay students there as well, um, they were kind of trapped in a way because they couldn't go back to their country because, you know, the flights and all that stuff. So I was listening to the stories. I was like, that's so sad. It's so messed up. So I made this poster that said, it's going to be okay. And it was this, um, how do you say that? Like a fill in. So you have, to, you have to mark it in with like colors, you know, like a fill in poster. So that was the idea. So um, I just reached out to the student to tell us to like, can we do something? And they were like, sure, like, let's make that. And then they provided like color, colors and like markers. And they went through all the rooms like in, in the student hotel and gave like a little poster that said it's going to be OK with markers, you know, because at that time we couldn't even go outside and do things like everything was closed. So they were just like, maybe you'll be, you know, occupied for 30 minutes. So uh, this was just a little motivator that I thought was really cute. And then this is probably one of the most important slides is um, a lot of people are probably like, okay, that's really cute, you know, doing things for charity and stuff. But can I make a living off of this? Can I, you know, actually make a profit off of this and all that stuff? And it's weird because as an activist, people kind of expect you to always just do things for good and, you know, give everything back. And I just feel like I give so much back. I want to receive things, you know, doing things just for the goodness of it feels really good, really. Um, but getting paid for it is, feels even better, probably. So, you know, um, so what I'm trying to say with this is, like, if, for me, my niche is obviously LGBTQ and anti-racism, and there are a lot of companies investing in that, in diversity, especially now. Um, but if you are, you know, more interested in feminism or veganism, if that's a word, and environment or whatever it is that you're about, you know, against animal cruelty, there will be companies that pay you for your expertise and for your knowledge. Um, so like these are, I mean, <laughs> it seems so braggy now, but uh, these are just some of the companies that I've worked for. So Museum Nacht Amsterdam, I worked for the police. Um, I worked with Pampers, Nick Tutorials. I mean, that's the most fun one probably to say. Um, but yeah, there is money and there is support. When you do something you love, people will find you for the thing that they love as well. So. Um, yeah, and I kind of want to end with that. Um, Louise actually already kind of said it in the manifest, but, you know, you can change the world. I feel like if you're, I don't know, a plumber or a teacher or whatever it is that you are, you, you know, a lot of people think that you have to have this huge network. It's just, you, it just takes one person. If you inspire that one person and that inspires their child and that child grows up to be in politics or whatever, you know, that's, that's that change. So everyone can be a creative and everyone can change the world. And that's it. <laughs> Marvelous. Thank you so much for such inspiring talk. I heard about you really, long really nice. before we met. Um, so now you're winsome we're and you're young, at least that's what they the said. Underneath your glitter you and your gold, so. you can't okay, deny so the fact watching, that you, you are growing old. Uh, please leave them here uh, on the comments, and then we're going to answer them. And I'm going to start with uh, with one from. from I heard about um, you long before so we met. You're talking about your uh, winsome the, uh, and your young. At least that's what they people. said. Right. Underneath uh, your glitter and your gold, um, you can't however, deny the fact that you are the growing the, uh, old. You have a thousand so eyes that never fall asleep. Someday I will leave you when I've had enough of your beauty. That's a really good question. <laughs> uh, because I get this, uh, I have this internal struggle with this uh, as well. For me right now, I'm at the point where I am taking a lot of the representation. So um, let's say 
a lot of people are just like, oh, what if Amazon now starts this pride campaign, which they did, by the way. But um, and they're like, but they did this thing ten years ago where they said this and this and this, and now it's fake, right? I'm just like, Amazon is a huge platform that has so many people on it and that has such a huge reach. Whether it's fake or not, people at home will watch that thing and and feel some type of way, right? So. Of course, there is tokenism, and of course, there is this this fake diversity thing, with, which everyone is now. I mean, everyone's now like diverse and inclusive. Every company has it in their bio, right? But um, I think for where we are right now, um, and the balance that we have with, with like marginalized groups here, and then like white heterosexual males here, I guess we still have to like push this. So if it's if it's tokenism. At this point, I I kind of take it. You know what I'm saying? Like the 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 goal is more important than than the way that we do it. And at the point that we're equal, we can you know filter out like okay, so that was not you know we could do a little bit better than that. And I guess to answer your question in a more statistic way, for me it's also like if the the company also gives back actual funds and money. So sorry, if Amazon. To keep with that example, they actually donated a lot of money, and a lot of people are like, "Okay, but money is not, you know, you can't buy our community." But money does so much. Like they, they, I think it was for a charity that does things for um, LGBT, um, LGBT plus people that are homeless that you know are kicked out by their parents. Like that's a huge thing, right? So in that case, again, I'll take it because I can't, I can't afford to to house them. You know, if someone does it. And um, they have that those funds. I'll definitely take it. But we do have to still be skeptical. Don't don't get me wrong. Like there's a lot of pink washing out there. Yeah. So so uh, yeah. So be sh- be sure to just be skeptic. But also um, just know that you know representation is, is more important than anything else. Does that answer your question? Yes, beautifully. <laughs> um, so uh, Chloe Lima on the comments is asking, what is your next project? Really interesting. Oh my God, I know her. Hey Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> hey Chloe. Uh, what is my next project? Oh, that is that's that's a good one. I mean, there's a couple of things in the works. I can't talk about I think everything, but um, I mean from a client perspective, I think I can. I'm I'm working with an organization uh, called the Rainbow Cities, and what they do is they um, they oh this is gonna be hard to explain in English but they have like uh, policy makers I guess so from all the cities that have prides um, they they share best practices when it comes to you know having your city be as LGBTQ friendly as possible and it's this huge network of people that are influential and that um, have so many knowledge of of how it is to make your city more inclusive so I'm working with them right now I'm also working on something else which I can't well. In short, it's like a fundraiser for Black women and their their um, their projects. So uh, you know, Black women are statistically the 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 people that start the most um, endeavors, like the new projects. But they are also statistically the least invested in. So um, I'm now working with a company that that does that. So I'm doing like the whole str- strategy and branding and stuff. And then for myself, I'm working on a a content platform for queer content. So you have to think like queer photography, queer illustrations, and all that stuff created by queer um, people and illustrators and, and allies. And we're offering them for free, uh, but we're working with sponsors so that every time you download one, a big goes to charity. But this is launching next year, so it's like far away, but that's that's what we're working on right now. And it's really fun because we already have like 30 illustrators that, that donated illustrations and stuff, and we're working now with you know companies to maybe see if they can invest in, in us and in the charities and stuff. So, so that beautiful. <laughs> now you're clearly an incredible individual with a really long array of projects, um, but for people that are watching us and they're only beginning or still in their formative process in school or or training or start starting to focus in their own craft uh, what advice would you give them to start designing with um, an inclusive point of view what would be a first step um that's a good one um 
I think to be inclusive, I think you have to, um, again, like what I just said, like you can kind of feel it. I feel like it's, it's this gut feeling to know, like, did I really represent the, this community? Because what a lot of, what happens a lot of the times is that it goes straight into like stereotypes, right? So that's what I see. Sometimes it's like a website and then they are like, hey, we, we're going to put like a queer family and then the whole room is filled with unicorns and rainbows and and you're just like you know Work. that's right i love it you know but it's but it's it's kind of like that is probably also someone's living room don't get me wrong but it's not the representation of you know of this culture like it's it's kind of like stereotyping it's not like people can just be two parents happen to be gay and have a child like that's the thing like everyday situations but then put them in a perspective of someone that we don't see as much right so to me that that would be a good start to kind of just maybe avoid those stereotypes and i guess also just as a designer that is young just just know your history i guess a little bit i mean i i don't know like history you kind of get that in in you know middle school and high school probably so and you don't get a lot of it so just just kind of research a little bit when you're when you're making something and show it to a couple of people also just maybe just look outside and it's like are these the people, not if you're living like this small, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> but you know, this is Rotterdam, so we're, we're good. But, um, you know, just, just really think like, am I representing, you know, the way that I see the world? Um, and is this, is this authentic? Just be authentic, I think. Beautiful. Short answer, Google. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, okay. Uh, so Matai says, uh, this gave me the energy to try again. Going to start writing today again. Thanks for this. Oh. Neil Spausma says, good luck, Matai. Oh, that was for the one before. <laughs> <laughs> good luck, Matai. <laughs> that is uh, so sweet. It's really, really sweet. Uh, well, it's been really, really nice. Delightful. Thank you so much for your contributions. I'm going to go back to the previous slide so that they can see your website again. Yourmore.com. Uh, how can they find you on Instagram? I am Giormore everywhere. So that's G-Y-O-R-M-O-O-R-E everywhere except for TikTok. It was already taken. Giormore <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> um, so lastly, uh, well, for starters from home, please give a warm applause to Gior. Thank you. Thank you so much. I hope you did it too. <laughs> so we would like to thank our local partners as well because this is possible thanks to our beautiful community including you uh hi Juan, for starters big shout out this science platform who is organizing an event uh, in the coming november check it out on their website and a student hotel uh, which is um a regular host of our events. For now, we're doing them online, but hopefully soon we're gonna be able to share the space again with all of you with some really nice croissants and coffee. Um, and lastly, but uh, very importantly, <laughs> to our amazing team, Eline and Iskander, which by the way, this is their amazing studio. Kudos to them, it's, uh, it's really nice, but you've already seen it. Uh, Titus, who couldn't join us this time because he's going to become a dad. Congratulations to him. Uh, Joey on the side, Marce behind the camera as well with the live, and our beautiful host, Lodo, over there. And today's host, Luis Bracamontes. And uh, Luis Bracamontes everywhere. That's not true. That's not my handle. <laughs> um, so thank you very much for tuning in. Thanks, you again. And have a lovely Friday, amazing weekend. Be creative, be kind, be intersexual. <laughs> intersectional. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Edit it. Thank you so much.